Hey there, puzzlers. My name is Fleb. Recently, I've been thinking a lot about puzzle hunt puzzles. I think that puzzle hunt puzzles are a good way to get people interested in puzzles because there's a large archive of them which is free. However, they have a very steep learning curve. And so when I've covered them on this channel, I've often seen comments that say things like, this seems like it's a bunch of random steps. What I want to do is show you some of the rules of these, some of the standard ways that these puzzles work. And to start off, I thought I would solve one of my own puzzles, which is a puzzle hunt puzzle, and is linked below in the description. If you'd like, you can try it from the start. This puzzle is from Baffle 15, and it's called Spectacular Space Sojourn. It's a puzzle hunt puzzle, so you know its answer is going to be an English word or phrase. But how can you go from what seems to be a pretty complicated two-page puzzle to the answer? I'll show you how to get the answer, and along the way, I'll talk about some common puzzle hunt techniques. Let's get started. When solving a puzzle hunt puzzle, you often start with the step that's just right in front of you. Here we have a bunch of crossword clues. And on the other side, we have a series of blanks. In addition to that, the clues are in two parts, with one set going one way and one set going the other way. And they're labeled kind of oddly in the other direction. Here you have things like 1 through 4, 5 through 6, but here 4 through 20 and 8 through 5? What that's showing you is that answers don't only fill in top to bottom, but also bottom to top. For example, the clues on B going down are layers of a wedding cake, which is tears, an important stat for a pitcher, which is ERA. But going the other way, weight of an empty container is tears, and popular outdoor equipment store is REI. And using this, you can fill in all the crossword blanks. Here's what the grid looks like all filled in. If you're looking to get the answer to this puzzle, we're not there yet. So the question remains, how do we get to the answer? There's a few aspects of this puzzle we haven't used yet, and one general technique in solving puzzle hunt puzzles is to look for the information that you haven't used. This is where people tend to get tripped up in puzzle hunts, or think that a step is random. There are three pieces here that clue the next step. There's the little planet in the lower right hand corner, which is Saturn. There's the fact that letters wrap around on the top and the bottom. And there's the fact that there are the dotted lines around the grid squares, which usually indicates cutting out. The next step is to cut out these strips, turn them into rings, and then arrange them like the rings of Saturn. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here I've cut out every strip and arranged them into a ring, and then arranged them concentrically like Saturn's rings. One question you might have at this point is, which ways do the ring rotate? Do I rotate it this way or that way? Like, what's the, what's the actual ordering? And to do that, we're going to use the squares that had the Saturn on them, except we're going to use their letters instead. Here there's a square with an N on it, and on the other side is a square with an S. Here's a square with an R on it, and on the other side is a square with an A. And you can arrange these rings so that it spells Saturn going from outside to inside, and then Saturn going from inside to outside on this side. Here, if you look at the squares that have planets on them, you can see that it reads Saturn. And turning this around, you can see that the squares with planets now read Saturn going from inside to outside. That's all fine and good, but how do we get the answer? We've solved crossword clues, we've put them in rings, we've taken the rings and arranged them like the rings of Saturn, and then we've taken the rings and put them in the correct orientation. But we still don't have an answer. Well, remember that Saturn was read both outside to in here and inside to out there. So a natural place to look for the answer is along this axis. Looking along that axis from one side spells answer. And looking from the other side, reading out spells Eulers. So the answer is Eulers. But why the answer Eulers? That seems like a random answer. Puzzle hunt puzzles often have very strange answers because the puzzle answers are often used in another puzzle. For example, in this puzzle hunt, all of the answers went forward in time and changed. So we had answers like wine that became vinegar. And this answer, Oilers, became Titans as the Houston Oilers, an old football team, 
changed cities and became the Titans. So we had very specific answers that we needed to be the answers of these puzzles. I hope that explains it a little bit better. If you have any questions about puzzle hunts, designing puzzle hunt puzzles, or anything I said in this video, please ask in the comments below. And if you are interested in more puzzle content, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and as always, happy puzzling.